So we're continuing our program. We were supposed to do the program yesterday. There was a change in plans. We're looking at the meanings and the messages behind what we recite and pray again and again in our salah. Today what I wanted to do, we mentioned in our last program that Ramadan is the month of the Quran. And the Quran is a book of guidance. And we ask how many of us understand the Quran or at least try to understand the Quran. Today I want to take it one step further. And we want to ask the question, more important than understanding what we're reading is what is what we're reading or understanding, what is it doing to our lives? How are our lives different or being transformed by what we read? And I'm just going to share one hadith with you from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and take a little, a, a step back into history from this particular hadith that shows you how the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam affected people. This hadith is from Bukhari and other books of hadith on Abi Abdurrahman عن عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه وأقرأ وأقرأ القرآن في إمراة عثمان يعني أبو عبد الرحمن حتى بلغ الحجاج وقال فذاك الذي أقعدني بمقعدي هذا so Abu Abdurrahman, he narrates on the authority of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, on the authority of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he said, the best of you are those who learn the Quran and they teach it to others. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and they teach it to others. And Abu Abdurrahman, the narrator of the hadith, he said that he, he, was, he taught Quran for a period of time from the era of Uthman radiallahu anh to the era of Hajjaj bin Yusuf and he made a profound statement he said this hadith is what made me sit in this place of mind now what is happening here this is a very special hadith we've all heard this hadith but if you look at what actually happened who narrated the hadith which companion Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh and when you look at the students of the Prophet والسلام, he taught the Quran to many individuals. But in my humble opinion, the most influential companion, Sahaba, when it comes to Quran is Uthman ibn Affan. Why do we say that? Because what did Uthman do? He was the first one in history to standardize the script of the Quran. He had the Quran written. And from his time, what he did, he compiled official copies. He sent them throughout the Muslim world. And from his time until now, any single Qur'an that is written in the history of this ummah or printed in a printing press or printed from a PDF document is written from the script of Uthman. So if you open up the Qur'an in the first page, you'll find Birasm al-Uthmani by the script of Uthman. So we know when we read the Qur'an, every harf is, is reward. Likulli harfin ashru hasanat, as the Prophet said. Every harf that we read, every letter, is 10 rewards. Now imagine the Quran you're reading, I'm reading in this masjid, in the other masjid in New Jersey, any single person on the face of this earth that's reciting Quran is from the work of Uthman radiallahu anh. Every letter is adding to his reward. That's why his, what he did for the Quran, he established this legacy. It's unimaginable. From his time until the end of time, anyone who will recite Quran the reward is going to Uthman radiallahu an. Now in this hadith, Uthman is the one who heard the statement of the Prophet. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ And do you think it's a coincidence? You know, the, his service, his khidmah to the Qur'an. It was because he heard these things. And these words, when these companions and these early Muslims heard them, it transformed them. Now who's the sub-narrator of the hadith? We said Abu Abdurrahman narrated from Uthman. Who is Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami radiallahu anh? He was a great tabiri. He was actually born in the lifetime of the Prophet, but he never got to meet him. So he's from the students of the companions, the tabirin. So he was among the students of Uthman. 
And Uthman, when he sent the Qur'an to different regions of the world, he sent along with them human teachers. He didn't just send the book, he sent a guide to teach people the Qur'an. So he picked to the city of Kufa, he sent his, the copy of the Mus'haf, he sent along with that Qur'an Abu Abdurrahman as sulami And he sent him to Kufa. And Abu Abdurrahman, he describes what happened, he said he went to Kufa, and he brought the Qur'an, and he found the largest masjid in Kufa, he went to that masjid, he found one spot by the pillar, and he sat down and he began teaching people Qur'an. Until the rest of his life, till the rest of his life he was teaching people Qur'an in that same spot. And he said in the, at the end of the hadith is his words, the narrator's words, he says, what inspired me to sit in this place of mine was nothing other than this statement of the Prophet that the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. Now, what was so special about Abu Abdurrahman as sulami and his service? First of all, it was such a tremendous time period. You know, he, he was sent in the time of Uthman. And in the hadith itself, we learned that he, he was there until the era of Hajjaj bin Yusuf. When did Uthman live and when did Hajjaj live? It's about four decades apart. We don't exactly know how much time that was. But Ibn Hajar in Fath al-Bari, he says that the end of the era of Uthman, the, kh the Khilafah of Uthman to the beginning of Hajjaj bin Yusuf's reign is 38 years. And the beginning of Uthman's Khilafah to the end of Hajjaj bin Yusuf's reign is 72 years. That means somewhere between 38 and 72 years, Abu Abdurrahman was sitting teaching people Quran. So we can take like a middle average figure about 50 years. So he spent almost half a century of his life teaching people Qur'an in one place. And what inspired from his own words, what inspired him to do that was this statement of the Prophet that he heard from his teacher Uthman, who heard from the Prophet والسلام, that the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and they teach it to others. Now what was also special about Abu Abdurrahman's service? He had many, many students. You know among his students was, were none other than Hassan and Hussein the grandsons of the Prophet ﷺ, they were students of Abu Abdurrahman. But among his students was one special student. There were many, many special students, but I'll mention one by name. His name was Asim ibn Abin Nujud. His name was Asim ibn Abin Nujud, and he was perhaps his most famous student. So that when Abu Abdurrahman passed away, Imam Asim took his place as the leader of Ahlul Qur'an in Kufa, and he began teaching in that spot. And among his students as well was none other than, um, he had many, many students, but Imam Asim himself, he had a student by the name of Hafs ibn Sulaiman. Now if you look at these names, something might sound familiar. Today we read Quran according to different readings, right? What is the reading of Quran that we recite today, the majority of us in the Muslim world? What is it known by? Hafs, right? Who is Hafs? Hafs is a student of Asim. So we recite Quran today by the riwayah of Imam Hafs from his teacher Imam Asim, from his teacher Abu Abdurrahman as sulami from Uthman radiallahu an, from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So just think about that. Today, 90, more than 95% of the Muslim world recites Quran, whether they know it or not. Most of us don't know that there's different qiraat that we're reading by Hafs. But the majority of the world today, anywhere in the face of this earth, children reciting Quran in the masjid, in the madaris, or people reading from the mushaf, it's all going back to this decision of Abu Abdurrahman as sulami to sit in one place in Kufa and teach people for so long. And then he had all these students that carried on that legacy to us today. By the way, Imam Asim, he had another student. So he had Hafs as a student, but he had a student by the name of Nu'man ibn Thabit. And who is Nu'man ibn Thabit? He's known by another name. Anyone know? Uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. So one of the greatest Imams, one of the four Imams of Fiqh, he was a student of this legacy of Quran. It all stemmed from one statement of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. That's the point. That's the point, brothers and sisters, that really you know, what did these statements do to the early Muslims? What is it doing for us? We read the verses of the Quran, we read the statements of the Prophet. Is it changing our lives? But if you look at today, all the reward is going back to these three, four individuals who established this legacy of Quran. 
And today it's an honor people who recite by ijazah, by isnad, like our Shaykh Walid, Hafizahullah Ta'ala. If you look at their certificates, their ijazahs, it shows that they learned the Quran from their teacher, from their teacher, from their teacher, going back to Imam Asim, from Abu Abdurrahman al Sulami, from Uthman ibn Affan, from the Prophet. It all goes back to these individuals. And from this hadith, we find what inspired them was this statement of the Prophet. So I wanted to share some of these words and ask that question for myself before anyone else. You know, when we read the verse of the Quran, it, it, does it just make, a, make us emotional and we do nothing with our lives? What are we doing with our lives? What kind of legacy are we leaving for our children and for subsequent generations? And lastly, I wanted to honor, I think our Shaykh Walid Atif, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he didn't get the introduction that he deserved. You know, we come here, we listen to his Quran, but really, we don't know uh, what a gem we have in our midst. Shaykh Walid Atif, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he's from Alexandria. He teaches Quran, he's an Arabic teacher over there. But his teacher, Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Hamid Abdullah, is known to be a person in this world who has the highest chain of Quran. Meaning he has the shortest links between him and the Prophet He has about 28 or 29 links, people between him and the Prophet So it's an honor to have people like that in our midst. We need to honor them, we need to respect them and appreciate them. And in terms of appreciation, I wanted to present to him um, my book, Children's Bequest. Now we sold more than 200 of these books. I've personally taught Tajweed to about 200 students. Most people don't know this book, the idea for this book came when I was sitting in the class of Sheikh Walid more than 10 years ago. He taught us Tuhfatul Atfal, a, a, a famous poem about Tajweed. And while we were sitting there, his classes were in Arabic, I had the idea of translating. And uh, some years later, I was able to translate um, this text, Tuhfatul Atfal. And I used the classes of our Sheikh Walid as a base for this book. So all the students, I need them to know, those of you who have studied this book with me, more than 200 students, all of that is coming from Shaykh Walid Atif, Hafizahullah Ta'ala. So really it should be his name and not my name. I just translated the information, so I wanted to present this book to Shaykh Walid as appreciation. Faliyatafadl Shaykh, Mashkuran Jiddan. Nasarullah and Yajal Kullu Dalik fi Mizani Hasanatikum Barakallah fi. And we have, I donated about 20 copies to the masjid. These are the last 20 copies in print before the second printing. So um, I'll ask Sheikh uh, Ala if he wants to uh, um, conduct that. Uh, we have 20 copies. Um, all the proceeds, 100%, will go to the masjid, to Minhal Center. So we only have 20 copies. We'll set a price. And inshallah, people can take uh, afterwards. Anyone who is willing to make a hundred dollar donation to the masjid, we have 20 copies and you can do that um, right after the prayer.